Welcome. Welcome to Desmond's Donders and it's a Wednesday waffle. What are we going to be talking about this week? Well I'm going to do an update. What's happened to Desmond. Talk about the weekend we've just had. And uh, probably talk about the NC500. Um, but we'll come back to that. <laughs> so <coughs> at the weekend we were out once again with Desmond and uh, it was a crazy mixed up weekend kind of. I was supposed to be going to uh, Plodimos, a uh, place we've been before but it's quiet, secluded and uh, not very busy normally. There's probably enough space for two, three, three vans if, if you pushed it and still allowed room for locals to use the car park for dog walking and hiking etc etc. Um, I got there, there were four vans and they were spread out taking the whole place up. Um, I didn't bother, I turned around, shook my head and drove off. Um, Part of that will come out in the NC500. There's two aspects to what I'm going to talk about. Um, if we overcrowd and displace the locals, we're, we're going to cause issues. So <clears throat> I moved on. Uh, I stopped uh, the first night at Calipher Viewpoint. Now Calipher Viewpoint is a lovely place, but it's it's a stopover. It's an overnight stop. Uh, there's nowhere really to go from there walking um, so I decided uh, somewhere else uh, contacted Lindsay and asked you know feedback where do you want to go and we decided on Drumming Castle so I went to Drumming Castle had a great day uh, on the Friday and Lindsay arrived on the Saturday uh, flew the drone lots and uh, got some great pictures I hope you'll watch those videos when they hit YouTube, um, mid-September probably. So, uh, what's up with Desmond? Well, we've known this was coming. He had a, um, what do they call them these days? Not, uh, he had a, a notification, I can't remember what they call them, on, the, on, the, uh, on his MOT, that is, Somp was starting to seep. So he's gone in to have a, a new seep. Well, you know, a new seep. A new sump. Well, you see, he is an old man. He's, he's, he's old in, in vehicle terms. And, you know, a little bit of leakage down under is, is probably to be expected. Uh, I dread when it happens to me. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's routine. And uh, because of what happened with our Volvo, we're having the timing belt replaced. It's a little bit early. Um, we've done 25,000 miles and previous owners have done about the same. So he's, uh, he's done about 50,000 miles. The belt's good for, I think they recommend changing about 75. Um, so we're just going to go for it early while he's in now and, and have that done. Mainly because of the experience we had with the Volvo um, when the belt went on that. I digress. <laughs> no, that's that's what he's he's having done this week uh, at the local garage, and what he was in for last week when we let Colin take our slot, so he could uh, get his oil change. Not Colin, Kev. Colin's the name of the guy who runs the garage. Anyway, <laughs> the NC five hundred. Now, <clears throat> there are two aspects to this. One I've already touched on, and we'll go for first quickly. And it's basically, I've been hearing reports of cars parked everywhere at places on the NC500, and vans, etc. I'm saying cars because the pictures I've seen are mostly people in tents, and they, they're in inappropriate places. Now I'm not saying that the camper vans are not doing what they shouldn't do, because there's pictures of that as well. I will say that one person who posted about 20 photographs of instance 
they'd seen. Well, strange that one of those photographs was the one featured on my Facebook comment on my own timeline about the BBC. And another one has a marquee which apparently is touring the NC500 and the southwest of Scotland and the borders. It's been all over the place. So while I accept that the thing is happening, people are behaving inappropriately, they're camping in places they shouldn't be, they're doing it to a density which they shouldn't be, but don't over-report it, you'll only spoil your case. And certainly, if you're going to report as having seen it, take your own bloody photographs. <sighs> Grumpy this week, aren't I? It's because Desmond's in the garage. <laughs> so, the real thing that got me going about the NC500 was a comment on one of the Facebook groups that I'm still in. Uh, I mean, a, a couple, not many these days. Um, or well, not as many as I used to be. A lot of the motorhomes places and camping places have turned into nasty places um, over the last few months. Those that weren't nasty places before because some of them are really, really awful. However, I'm going off topic again, aren't I? Anyway, the comment I saw was, uh, if you're going to do the NC500, make sure you stock up well with food and with diesel. Oh dear. Yes, those of you who've been with me for a while will know I've talked about this before in a couple of havers I think they were called back then. But I'm going to talk about it again. I thought about going one route, and I probably will, I know that route's not the NC500. <laughs> but I thought I would talk about it one way, and I, and I will, but I'm. it's very much tongue in cheek. And I, I wish to apologise for those doing the NC500 for the starving folk who have little or no fuel and nowhere to get food or fuel to get food who live around the northern coast of Scotland on the NC500. It's a shame that there's no shops there for them to, to buy food from or petrol stations for them to buy petrol or diesel in the area. For goodness sake, be sensible. If you're going to tour the NC500, by all means, fill up with fuel before you go. Fill up with, uh, with, with food before you go, if that's what you want. But there's nothing better than going out on the NC500 and trying the local shops, the local food, and even the local diesel. No, don't drink it. There is no end of shops, no end of artisan markets, no end of places to refuel on the NC500. The people, as I've said before, don't drive from the northwest tip at Durness all the way down to Perth, all right, Inverness, uh, to do their shopping. They have local shops. And guess what? There's even Tesco's and Olgie's and Lidl's up there. There's co-ops. It's amazing. There are shops in the north of Scotland. And while in some places diesel can be expected to be a little bit higher, you will find, since there's been a government subsidy applied to the islands and the west coast, and the north of Scotland, that in many places, if you stop to fill up at Inverness, along your route, you will find places where you might have been better filling up. Yes, you'll find more expensive places, but it's only by two or three pence a litre. But believe me, there are places up there which are as cheap as anywhere in the country now, because the locals have set them up in such a way that they can qualify for the subsidy and so offer themselves cheaper fuel and into the bargain you as well and make a few bob for the local economy. There are, I mean, yeah, we are disappointed. In, in a couple of weeks we're headed north. Now we won't be following the NC500 
but uh, we're disappointed and we're, we're altering our route so we can go there another time that some of the artisan markets have not yet reopened because the meat and the bread that you can buy at these places is absolutely fantastic and not expensive. People, really, the folk of the North West and North of Scotland do not starve. They have plenty of food and plenty of fuel. All they ask is you use the local shops, you use the local restaurants, takeaways even, and enjoy your holidays and take nothing but memories. Leave nothing but tracks. Thank you for watching Desmond Stoners. We'll hope you'll join us again for more photos, waffle and video as we travel around Scotland. Bye for now.